is the Provoke Prawn, and what you're seeing here might be my new favorite wireless gaming mouse. This is the Corsair M65 RGB Ultra Wireless. This is an interesting mouse for a number of different reasons. It has eight programmable buttons. It has optical switches from Omron and includes Corsair's Quick Strike technology with a zero gap design. It has 50 G's acceleration, has 650 IPS and 26,000 max DPI. It's also weight tunable. And it isn't lightweight, so it's worth bearing that in mind. It comes in at 110 grams and then has some tunable weights that allow you to set it up to go up to 128 grams. So an interesting setup there, potentially, and a really nice looking mouse. It's also a really nice ergonomic shape. The only thing that holds me back from saying this is the best mouse ever is the size because it's a touch too small for me. And I think that's probably because it's designed for claw grips. However, it is still wonderfully shaped with a nice little texture on either side and the thumb rest and more. This is an unboxing video and a review. I'm going to be talking to you about my experience with this mouse over the last couple of weeks. And I am happy to say that I will probably be keeping this as my main when I'm not reviewing other mice. It's a really nice setup with obviously Corsair's Slipstream wireless technology and the option of Bluetooth connectivity as well as USB-C charging. You can get up to 120 hours battery life out of it with Bluetooth and so you can game for hours and hours and hours. Now obviously you mostly want to be using this in 2.4 gigahertz Slipstream wireless because you get a low latency response was 0.9 milliseconds. It also has up to 2000 Hertz polling rate, which makes it agile and interesting for professional fast paced gaming as well. Obviously though, it is a bit weightier and the pros will often go for the lightweight mice. And I must say I've been using super lightweight mice for a long time and they are very nice to use. And once you've used a heavy mouse and you go to a lightweight one and then back to a heavy one again, it's a real shock to the system. But you do have the option to customize the weight on this mouse. As I said, it comes in at 110 grams, but then you'll see you have these extra additional weights that you can add in. You can add in the black ones and then the silver sort of locking mechanisms on top of that, or you could just add the silver plates in. So you get a choice of customizing it in three different zones on the underside of the mouse to your own personal preference. I've tried it with and without the weight systems. And obviously it's only making a marginal difference to it, but it is nice to have that customization option. So you do have a good variety of things going on here. You've not only got a good looking mouse with eight buttons, easy access side button, large sniper button, which I'm glad to see still sticking with on some of its mice because it is really nice to have that extra side button and also one to drop you into a lower DPI for sniping purposes or to be programmed with other things. You have DPI adjustment buttons on the top, as well as those side buttons. That sort of nice bit of a thumb rest there. It doesn't stick out too far. I'd like it to be a bit larger personally, but it is nice to have it there and a good grip. Now, as I said, this is a little bit too small for me. I feel if this was a little bit larger in terms of length and overall size, it would be hands down the best mouse I've tried in the last couple of years. Unfortunately, it's a little too small, but perhaps other people with smaller hands might find it magnificent still. On the underside, you'll see some nice slick areas and obviously the button to switch between Bluetooth and wireless connection. And then simple installation of the weight system. You have three points where you can put the extra weights in and adjust your preference. And then obviously just screwing those down and locking them into place so they don't fall out or shift around when you're gaming. And this setup is obviously straightforward and really easy to use. Another thing that's hidden away in this mouse and has to be set up within Corsair's IQ software, and one of the things that makes this mouse particularly interesting is it has a six axis gyro and accelerometer, which enables not only a low liftoff distance, but also allows you to set up programmable gestures for when you tilt the mouse as well. So I'll talk about this a bit more when I show off the IQ software. But that means that you can lift the mouse up and tip it in a certain direction and it'll give you an action from that corresponding action. And they give examples of switching weapons or reloading or something like that. And obviously that's pretty neat. So not only do you get eight programmable buttons, but you have these 
tilt actions that you can also program with other things. This might seem a bit gimmicky, but if you're very sort of flexible in your hand movements or you move your hand around a lot when gaming anyway, then this obviously gives you extra options in terms of the use. Now, once it's together and all the weights are installed, it certainly feels weighty in the hand. And this is one of the things I like about it because it feels very premium for that reason. This isn't a cheap mouse necessarily, but it's also not the most expensive I've seen either. And you certainly feel like you're getting a premium device here because it is a bit taxing sometimes when you pay a lot of money for a mouse and you're getting something that feels really light and sort of hollow and cheap because of it. So actually paying extra here gives you a very good quality build quality and a very good look. One thing that is odd to me though is that Corsair hasn't got a braided USB-C cable here and it doesn't seem particularly lightweight or nice. It's just a rubberized affair, not particularly thrilling. But obviously this is a wireless mouse. So once it's charged, you can obviously detach it and it has a decent battery life in there as well. So you won't be plugging in that often anyway. But I think it's worth noting, a bit unusual. Although obviously detachable USB-C, so that means you could get your own aftermarket USB cable if you wanted to. So what you've seen so far is a very nice mouse. Another thing that I really like about it is the sort of textured finish on the mouse wheel that actually looks like a little tire, a car tire, and is satisfying as well on the finger. Very good action to it and a really all round nice looking mouse with a really good comfortable fit. If you're a claw grip user and that's where you like to hold your mouse then you're certainly going to enjoy this one. One of the other things that I was struck by with it also is the nature of the click. So it has optical switches on it and it is designed with an aluminium frame but also with Omron's optical switches with this quick strike technology from Corsair which basically means you have a very small gap and there's a zero gap technology between the left and right buttons and the switches themselves. So you basically only need a tiny bit of force in order to actuate those switches and then feel the click and obviously have that action happen in game. The result of this is an interesting feedback that I've not experienced with other mice that I've tried. And especially because of the aluminium frame on this, when you press the buttons, you hear like a metal ping and it's certainly a very nice sound. I actually, find it very satisfying in an unusual way. But more importantly, it obviously actuates really quickly and is really responsive for gaming. I've been using this for Rainbow Six Siege for Battlefield 2142 beta and just thoroughly enjoying all round goodness from here. I'm just gonna be quiet for a moment so that you can hear the sounds of the switches and what I was talking about. There's a good consistency between those left and right switches and the action on them and the sound they make. And you'll hear that metal ping that isn't present in the side buttons and the thumb buttons or the sniper button, but it's certainly noticeable on the left and right clicks. Again, the feel here is a very premium one. It really feels like a good quality mouse, nicely designed and a good value for money in terms of what you're getting on from the specs and the quality and the build quality of it and the overall nature of it. Now, I said it had eight programmable buttons that includes not only the side buttons, but also the DPI switching buttons on the top. You'll notice there's up and down DPI levels there and an RGB LED which lets you know which zone you're in so you get a different color depending on what level of dpi you're on the only other rgb lighting zone is the corsair logo at the back which is unfortunately hidden that bleeds down into the bottom as well with three stripes down the bottom and we'll see that in a second and that is obviously adjustable with an iq but it's not particularly fancy and if you're into rgb lighting then you might be a bit disappointed in that but the overall style and vibe of this mouse is certainly an excellent one it's a really good looking one 
and one of the better looking mice I've seen recently, but more importantly, comfortable, agile, and has fantastic features and specifications. It's been really good for gaming, then responsive as well. That 2000 hertz polling rate and the optical switch setup means that you get really fast actuation. The slipstream wireless obviously also ensures low latency, so what happens in game is what you are inputting in the blink of an eye. It's fast and fun. And the hidden highlights of it, things like the ability to add tilt into the gestures and actions from there is also intriguing. So the mouse has a lot more going for it than what first meets the eye. And that's one of the things that I really like about it. I'm going to show you a bit more about it within the IQ software. Here we are within Corsair's IQ software. You'll see the Slipstream wireless dongle and the mouse are on separate tabs. It's worth noting this because you can change the device settings and set this to 2000 hertz polling rate for the dongle and also for the mouse itself. Under the device settings, you'll see there's an option set to 2000 hertz. And also note in here a number of other adjustments for things like the RGB lighting on the fly adjustment. How often it goes to sleep, obviously for power saving purposes. And if you find power saving is an issue, there's also a power saving mode as well. You can also adjust the lift height here and set between various different levels as well, which is nice. As usual, you have the ability to assign the different buttons. So you can assign all the different thumb buttons, for example, and you'll see you can also adjust DPI up and down and choose from a number of other assignments. You have the ability to switch between profiles, for example, record macros, keystrokes. There's also voice mod compatibility in here. So if you run voice mod, you can assign actions in there too. Hardware lighting, obviously you can adjust the RGB lighting on this. I'm not going to go into too much depth because you only really have that one RGB lighting zone. The DPI levels, you have five different levels and then a sniper level. Obviously this is on your sniper button on the side, but you will note also you have colors down the side here that change the lighting strip that I was talking about between the DPI level buttons. So you have an idea, a visual cue of what level you set up to. And obviously you can go insane and go up to 26,000 if you want. Although I wouldn't recommend it. I don't even know why they have such a high level in there. So essentially you have six stages of DPI, but five that you can switch between with the buttons on top. The thing that might be the most interesting though for many is this gesture setup. So you'll see you have the option to tilt left and right and forward and backwards and then assigned gestures on it as well, which is pretty neat. And it talks you through the process of it here. So in this section, what you'll find is that you have an angle in degrees of how much tilt you've got. And if you click start, you'll get a real time representation of when you're tilting the mouse. So if you look, if I tilt it to the right, that's at 50 degrees now. And it's got a little icon to show you how much that's 10 degrees 20 degrees 30 degrees 40 degrees 50 degrees so from here you can set what level you want to tilt it at so you might be for example you only want to tilt it a little tiny bit you want to just lift it off the desk uh, or you might want to go the other way and have it a real strong tilt because you might find for example that you lift your mouse off the desk to move it across your mouse mat sometimes and you don't want it accidentally activating so once you've done that, you get an idea of what the levels are and you can set them for each. You can then go into your key assignments. And if you scroll down, you'll see left and right tilt, front and back tilt in there. And you can then click to assign various things. So what I've done is I've assigned left tilt to be the letter R so I can use it to reload my weapon in game. And back tilt is actually set to a macro. So when you've assign your things you can just drag and drop it in there so i'll just demonstrate this in notepad now if i tilt to the left you'll see it type in r so just take my word for it but i'm not typing on the keyboard right now if i then tilt backwards so i'm lifting the front of my mouse off the desk it then does my macro which is just typing out this is the revoke one obviously you could do other things for actions in game but all this requires is me to lift the mouse off the desk this has all sorts of implications even if it's something crazy like you find you're regularly typing out your address in emails, for example, you could assign a macro. So all you have to do is lift your mouse in a certain direction and it automatically type it out for you. Or you could set it up 
to be an action in a game and you obviously have a lot of different potential here you just have to bear in mind how much you might move your mouse around and lift it off the desk but this is a really interesting unique feature of this mouse which is buried in the settings and not immediately obvious and obviously you need IQ in order for it to work but you'll find it under the key assignments and then obviously you can set the gesture levels within the gestures so have you seen here the Corsair M65 RGB Ultra Wireless is an interesting mouse with loads of interesting specs, a nice comfortable fit, really good switches, and an overall great experience. This is one of my favorite mice for a long time, and I'd highly recommend it. I just wish it was a little bit larger. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.